Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamu alaikum dear students. I hope you all are fine and in the best conditions of your health. So in today's lecture for the course of medicinal chemistry, we shall study about the type of drug receptor interactions. The key concepts which, uh, which we shall discuss in this lecture are the drug receptor interactions involving all type of known bonds like lining bond, hydrogen bonding, wonder wall interactions, and the covalent bonding. Right, so in the previous lecture, as we have stated that there are two types of drug receptor interactions. Right, so the reversible interactions, in case if the drug binds reversibly with the receptor, then such drugs will have shorter duration of action. So these drugs will only uh, show their biological effect until they remain bonded with the receptor. Secondly, in case if the drug binds irreversibly with the receptor, then such drugs will have longer duration of action. So we do not want drug to have longer duration of action and irreversible type of interactions. We also studied about the receptor molecule, which is also known as target molecule. It has a protein-like structure and it has specific three-dimensional structure, right? We also studied that drug interacts with certain specific receptor sites of the target molecule and those receptor sites are actually basically the functional groups that are able to bind with the receptor. We also saw that in order for a drug to show its biological activity, it must have three-point attachment with the receptor. So it must have three-point attachment. If a drug is not able to make a three-point attachment, then it will not be able to show its biological effect. However, if a drug has more than three points of attachment, it will show stronger interaction with the receptor and it will show some stronger biological activity as well. Also, we saw that the chemical structure of the drug should be complementary to the receptor site means that the functional groups on the drug should be able to bind with the functional groups on the receptor site. So the functional groups and the structure of the drug should be compatible with the functional group and the structure of the receptor site. Right, so the drug receptor interactions change with change in the structure of the drug. In fact, any type of bond could be involved with drug receptor interactions. It can be ionic bond, it can be covalent bond, it can be one of forces, it can be repulsive interactions, whatever. But ideally, a drug must bind reversibly with the receptor molecule. So if a drug is not binding reversibly, it's binding irreversibly, then in that case we have some toxic situation that arises. We also saw that biological response of a drug is dependent on ability of the drug to bind with the receptor and also on the ability of the drug to change the activity of the receptor. So if a drug is able to bind with the receptor, but it is unable to change the activity of the receptor, in that case, biological effect will not be produced. Similarly, if a drug is not able to bind with the receptor, this is end of story. So biological e effect will not be produced. So it's very important that the drug should be able to bind with the receptor and it should be able to change the activity of its receptor. We also saw that the biological response of a drug is dependent on the strength of drug receptor interaction, on the duration of the drug receptor interaction, and on the type of drug receptor interaction. We also saw that the strength of interaction between the drug and the receptor is called affinity. Now we shall study about each type of interactions in a brief detail so that you may have a clear idea that how these type of interactions affect the drug receptor interactions. Firstly, we have electrostatic interactions. So electrostatic interactions are the attractions between opposite charges, right? So the opposite charges attraction are called electrostatic interactions. So in general, the charges may be partial charges or they may be full charges, right? So the electrostatic interactions from medicinal chem chemistry point of view, they are of three types. The charge-charge interaction, Next, we have charge dipole interactions, and lastly, we have dipole dipole interactions. The charge charge interactions are the attractions between opposite charges, which are full charges. So, if the attraction between a positive charge and a negative charge, this is an example of charge charge interaction. But when you have a polar molecule, so polar molecules have a partial positive end and a partial negative end, so polar molecules are said to possess a dipole, right? So, if there is attraction between a full charge, and a dipole, then such type of interactions are called charge-dipole interactions. 
well if there is attraction between two polar molecules so each polar molecule is considered the dipole right so interaction of a one dipole with an other dipole is said to be dipole dipole interaction right so whether that's a charge charge interaction charge dipole interaction or dipole dipole interaction all of three three belong to the category of electrostatic interactions so firstly we'll consider the charge charge interaction so charge charge interactions are called the ionic bond right so you know that strength of ionic bond is universally proportional to the distance between them so if the two ions are far away the ionic bond will be weaker but if the two ions are closer together then the ionic bond will be a stronger one right the so strength but one thing is very important although the strength is proportional inversely proportional to the distance between the ions still the charge charge interactions are stronger than other type of interactions right so the other type of non bond non covalent bonds whether they are the dipole dipole interactions the hydrogen bond or one over bond they are much more bond distance dependent than ionic bond right so they become very very reduced as the distance decreases so still the ionic bond is something that is very dominant at far away distance right so although ionic bond is inversely proportional to the distance between other charges but still the ionic bond is a dominant form of bond for long range interaction so what we mean by long range interaction is that so if the distance between receptor and drug molecule is higher then still the drug and receptor molecule are able to attract each other by means of electrostatic attractions right so when the drug molecule and the receptor are far away and the drug is approaching the receptor then the first interaction that comes into action are the ionic interactions right so ionic interactions between the positive and negative charges they make the first interaction and since they are at far away distance the drug and the receptor so that's why the ionic bonds are considered as long range interactions because they can affect the drug and the receptor at long distance as well right so the charge charge interactions between biological systems and the drug are possible if ionic species are present in the biological molecule as well as drug as physiological pH for example if your drug does not have any group that can be ionized then such interaction cannot exist right so it's very important for charge charge interaction to occur that your macromolecule that is the re receptor molecule and your drug must have groups that can be ionized so if you don't have the groups which can be ionized then such ionic interactions are not possible right so the important thing is that the ionic bond are the first interactions that occur when the drug is approaching the receptor so these are long range interactions right and such interactions can only occur when there are some functional groups that can be ionized so these functional groups should be present both in the macromolecules which is your target molecule and in the drug the next type of interactions are the charge dipole and dipole dipole interactions all right so charge dipole and the dipole dipole interactions so first we will consider this one so if you have a full charge full positive charge or full negative charge in a molecule that is a polar molecule so attraction between a fully positive or fully negative charge and a dipole molecule this is known as charge 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 dipole interactions right so why a molecule is polar molecules are polar because they are composed of atoms of different electronegativity so because of difference in electronegativity there is some asymmetric distribution of electrons right so because of the difference in electronegativity one of the atom will have higher electronic density while the other will have lower electronic density so because of difference in electronic density which is also called the asymmetric distribution of electrons so because of this difference in electronegativity we get electronic dipoles so the end where electronic density is higher that gets a partial negative charge while the end which has lower electronic density that gets partial positive charge right so because of difference in electronegativity we get partial positive and partial negative charges since they are two poles so the molecules that are possessing such partial positive and partial negative ends such molecules are called dipoles so in general all polar molecules are considered as dipole right so when these dipoles in a cell or in the aqueous medium they are attracted by an ion right that ion can be positive or that can be negative so the attraction between this dipole and charge is called charge dipole interaction while in case of you have two polar molecules right and the two polar molecules are attracting each other 
then in that case the interaction is called dipole dipole interaction so let's consider some examples so in this example you see that here we have NH3 which is positively charged and here we have carboxylic ion which is negatively charged you can see this attraction between opposite charges and both charges are full charges right so this is example of charge charge interaction now here we can say that nitrogen and oxygen so this is type of hydrogen bonding we shall study it in later detail not now here we have a polar bond which is sulfur hydrogen and here we have a positive charge so this type of interaction is the attraction between a dipole and a charge so this is example of charge dipole interaction right again here so here we have a negative charge and a dipole so this is example of charge dipole interactions here we have a dipole and here again we have a dipole so this is attraction of dipole dipole interaction right so just remember that it's not compulsory that a molecule will only have a charge charge interaction or it must only have charge dipole interaction or only dipole dipole interaction so whenever drug binds with certain receptor it can have a large amount of interactions it can have charge charge interaction it can have also the charge dipole interaction and at the same time it can have dipole dipole interactions as well right so the drug receptor interactions do not involve only one type of interactions they can have all type of interactions all at the same time as well right so charge dipole and dipole dipole interactions you know that charge charge interactions they are the longest range forces means when your drug and your receptor they are far away but still the negative charges and the positive charges of the charges are able to attract each other so these charge charge interactions they are the longest range forces right next is the charge dipole interactions the charge dipole interaction depends on orientation of the dipole because if you have a positive charge so in order to have a charge dipole interaction it must be such that the positive charge should be facing the negative end of the dipole right so that's why the charge dipole interactions are dependent on the orientation of the dipole right then we have dipole dipole interactions the dipole dipole interactions are dependent on the mutual orientation of the dipole so dipole for dipole dipole interaction the positive end of one dipole should be next to negative end of the other dipole right so the charge charge dipole is dependent on it's long range forces not directional so it doesn't matter that uh, what is the direction of the dipole since the charges can attract each other so they are long distance in case of charged dipole so such type of interactions are dependent only on the orientation of the dipole while dipole dipole interactions they are dependent on the mutual interactions of the dipole so the charged dipole is less than charge of a dipole is less than that of ion right so that's why the charged dipole interactions are weaker than ionic bond and dipole dipole interactions are much weaker than charged dipoles however the charged dipole and dipole dipole interactions they are key contributors to overall strength of the drug receptor interaction because such interactions can occur in any polar molecule right so it's not compulsory that for charged dipole or dipole dipole interaction to occur that they must have some ionizable groups right so the polar interactions whether they are charged dipole interactions or dipole dipole interactions that are present in almost all polar molecules right so the difference key difference between ionic pole, ionic interactions and the dipolar interactions is related to their distance and dependence so that ionic interactions they are non-directional but they can occur at larger distance so while the dipole dipole and charge dipole interactions they are dependent on orientation but they are not uh, existent at much longer longer distance so we have examples of ionic and dipole interactions you can see that here we have a negative charge and here we have a positive charge so this is example of ionic interaction here we have a positive charge and a partial negative charge so this is example of a charge and dipole interactions you can see here that if the molecule were flipped if the molecule was such that the partial positive end was next to nitrogen then such nit interactions cannot occur right so this is the orientation of the dipole which is important here that the positive charge should be next to the partial negative charge next we have a dipole dipole interaction because this is a dipole molecule here you can see nitrogen is partially negative and it is facing the carbon which is partially positive so here the orientation of this dipole as well as this dipole is very important 
for the interaction. So this is an example of ionic and charged dipole and dipole-dipole interactions. Next we have the charge transfer complex and inductive interactions. So here we have polarity which generates in the charged molecule or for example if you have a molecule that has a permanent dipole you know that whenever there is a polar bond in a molecule so this polar bond can induce polarity in another molecule right it can also induce polarity into the next carbon as well so the strength of interaction depends on the dipole moment of the first molecule and the polarity of the second molecule for example if you have a nonpolar molecule and next to this dipole nonpolar molecule is a polar molecule so this polar molecule can attract the electronic density of this nonpolar molecule as a result this polar molecule will convert it will induce polarity in the second molecule right so how much polarity is induced in the nonpolar molecule that depends on number one the dipole moment of the first molecule and second it will depend on the polarity of the second molecule as well so it means that if an electron donating group or if an electron donating molecule comes closer to a molecule or a group that is electron withdrawing, then donor will transfer some of the charge to the acceptor. Right? So this donation of the charge from donor to acceptor forms a type of interaction which is known as charge transfer interaction. Right? So the transfer of electronic density is not a complete transfer, it's just showing some attraction. So transfer of electronic density from the donor to the acceptor. Is called charge transfer complex. The charge transfer complex occurs between two molecules, right? So one of the molecule is donor, while the other is become because of electron deficiency. This is acceptor. So the donor molecule uh, donates electronic density to the acceptor molecule. So because of this, a charge transfer complex is formed. So next we have in case of intramolecular redistribution of electronic density. For example, if you have a functional group. And the functional group, because of its electronegativity, is withdrawing the electronic density from the next carbon. As a result, although the alpha carbon was not polar, but because of presence of a polar group, this alpha carbon is becoming polar, and this alpha carbon will withdraw electronic density from the beta carbon, making the beta carbon polar as well. Right? So this redistribution of electronic density in a chain because of presence of an electronegative atom, this is called the induced polarization and we are we also known it as inductive effect right so inductive effect can also exist because of electronegative atom so the difference between inductive effect and the charge transfer complex is that the charge transfer complex exists between two atoms between two groups or two molecules while the inductive effect is an intramolecular phenomenon due to one function group, right? So when two groups or two molecules, one is electron rich, electron donor, they are directly with each other. So this is called charge transfer complex. But when one functional group is causing redistribution of electronic density, this is called inductive effect, right? So whether the effect is inductive or whether the effect of charge transfer complex right so they are dependent on distance as well as difference in ionization potential of the donor and the acceptor right so the distance should be lower and the ionization potential of the donor and acceptor should be compatible right so one should be highly electron donor another should be highly electron acceptor means what should be able to donate the electronic density and other must have sufficient electron affinity to accept the electronic density right so whether it's inductive effect whether it's charge transfer complex, both are dependent on the distance. Secondly, both are dependent on the electronegativity as well as electron affinity. Right? So if the electron affinity and electronegativity is higher, then in that case, uh, sorry, ionization potential and electron affinity is higher, in that case, there will be strong interaction between the drug and the receptor. Next, we have hydrogen bonds. So you know that hydrogen bonds are very specific. You know, hydrogen bonds can only exist between hydrogen which is electronically deficient and some electronegative atom that has some lone pairs. They are short range and they are directional, non-bonding interactions, right? So they can exist between hydrogen atom which is covalently bonded to some electronegative atom and it is uh, attracted being, it's showing attraction to some other electronegative atom which has some lone pair. So we can designate this hydrogen bond like this one. So this hydrogen is attached 
covalently with some electronegative atom. So because of this electronegative atom, this hydrogen is becoming electronically deficient. And we have another electronegative atom with lone pairs. So this hydrogen, which is deficient, is showing attraction towards lone pair of this other electronegative atom. So this is the hydrogen bond, so it's very directional because hydrogen always points towards the atom that has the lone pair of electrons, right? So the bond length of hydrogen bond typically range from 2.5 to 3.2 arms to naught, and the bond angle ranges from 130 to 180 degree, right? So strong hydrogen bonds are formed when the hydrogen is perfectly aligned with this Y atom, right? So if they're perfectly alignment, then the hydrogen bonding interactions which will be much stronger. So hydrogen bonds have weaker strength than ionic bond, they have weaker strength than covalent bond, but they are helpful to determine the conformation and folding of macromolecules. You can say the double helix of the DNA, so the double helix of the DNA is the way like because of hydrogen bonding. So if there were no hydrogen bonding, the DNA would not have, been hydrogen, uh, would not have been a double helix. Right? So the conformation of a macromolecule is determined by the hydrogen bonds. Although they are weaker, they are not stronger than ionic bond or their covalent bond, but they are helpful in determining the conformation of the macromolecules. Right? Also, we can modify the number of hydrogen bonds depending on the requirement for polarity for absorption and permeation. Right? So you must remember the Lipinski's Lipinski's rule of five, which suggests that compounds with more than five hydrogen bond donors or more than 10 hydrogen bond acceptors, they are not properly absorbed and they have lower permeability, right? So we can, by using this Lipinski's rule of five, can modify the number of hydrogen bonds so that we can get the optimum absorption and polarity. But the hydrogen bonds are important in developing interaction with the receptor molecule because they help to determine the stable configuration and they help to bind the drug with the receptor in a more suitable conformation that gives stable drug receptor complex. Then we have arene arene interaction. Suppose that you have an aromatic ring in your drug and there is also an aromatic ring in your receptor molecule. So because of the presence of two arene rings or the two aromatic rings, there is some development of pi and pi interaction between the pi system or the benzene ring of your drug and the pi system of the receptor molecule. So these pi pi interactions are very weaker. They are poorly directional. They're not much directional, but again, they are helpful in molecular recognition. It helps in the drug binding with the receptor, specifically if there are non-bonding interactions that are much prevalent. Right, also such interactions help to stabilize uh, the energies between two aromatic rings, right? So the arene and ring interaction, they help in stabilizing the energy of the aromatic rings that are present. Next type of interactions that are normally observed when we are considering the drug receptor interaction are the dispersion forces. You know that the London dispersion forces are the main forces that are existing between the nonpolar molecules. Right. So when you have no other function group, when you have nonpolar molecule, then the only type of force of attraction that can exist between nonpolar molecules are the London dispersion forces. So they are short range interactions. Right. So when two molecules are approaching each other, then temporary dipoles of one molecule may induce the dipole in other molecules. So this is called induced dipole. Right. So because of this London dispersion forces we get some net attractive forces between two nonpolar molecules, right? So these interactions are very, very weaker. So the relative energy is about two kilojoules per mole, right? But they are significant when we are considering the interaction of drug receptor interaction, especially if your drug and the receptor have the nonpolar groups which are interacting with each other. All right, so when you are considering the interaction between nonpolar groups, all the London dispersion forces are very, very weaker, but they are very significant and the only type of forces that can exist between the nonpolar molecules. Then we have short-range repulsive forces. As studied in the previous lecture, the repulsive forces can be because of the repulsion of electronic cloud of the two molecules, or they can be because of steric hindrance. 
right? So when the two molecules come closer as the internuclear distance decrease, so with decrease in the internuclear distance, the electronic load of the two molecules tend to repel each other. And because of the repulsion, so the energy of the system increases and the systems become unstable, right? So there must be some balance between the repulsive interactions and the dispersion forces. So there must be some balance between the attractive forces and the repulsive forces. Right? So because of these repulsive interactions and the attractive interactions, we can determine that what is the minimum distance which can be maintained that has minimum repulsion and maximum interactions. So this favorable distance is very important for the part. So whenever two molecules are coming closer, the at point they will start to repel each other because of the repulsion between electron and electron and nucleus and nucleus. So a balance between these repulsive forces and attractive forces is very important because this is important because the point at which these forces are balanced, it is the favorable distance at which the drug and the receptor can approach each other. Because if they come more closer than this distance, then repulsive forces will dominate and the interactions will become more repulsive in nature and the system will become unstable. So now we have conformational energy. So when the drug binds with the receptor, right, so there is some change in conformation of the drug so in order to perfectly bind with the receptor. So the strength of this interaction is dependent on the conformation stability. So if the drug has not conformation stability, it's not bonded with the receptor in some stable conformation, then in that case the drug receptor interaction will become weaker. Right? So if a drug binds with the receptor in its stable configuration, then strength of the receptor will be higher and such complex will be stable. But if a drug has to acquire a high energy conformation, means that unstable conformation for binding with the receptor, means that drug has to distort itself to a larger extent in order to bind with the receptor, then because of this distortion, the interaction between the drug and receptor will be very, very weak and the receptor will be unstable, right? So if the drug receptor complex is unstable, then the receptor will not be able to show its biological action. So it's not important for the drug to just get and bind with the receptor. It's very important for the drug to bind with the receptor in some proper conformation. The arrangement of atoms should be proper, should be stable, so that there is minimum uh, repulsion between the atoms of within the drug molecule as well as the repulsion between the drug and the receptor molecule. So if the conformation is stable, the drug receptor interaction will be stable and the biological response will be prominent. But in case the re drug receptor interactions are weaker because of the strained conformation in that case, the drug receptor complex will be unstable and such drug receptor complex will not be able to show its biological effect to a much larger extent. Now we have hydrophobic interactions. So nonpolar molecules tend to associate themselves together, right? So since they are nonpolar molecules, nonpolar molecules want to stay together. So in presence of an aqueous solution, these nonphobic though these nonpolar molecules when they associate with each other, so they tend to repel water. They tend to exclude water between them. So they are also long range attractive forces. Right, so when nonpolar nonpolar surfaces interact with each other, they tend to displace water from the interacting surfaces. The overall strength uh, is dependent on the quality of the stereochemistry of the two molecules. So if a higher surface area is available for interacting for the nonpolar surfaces, the nonpolar hydrophobic interactions will be higher. But if the surface area available for such interactions are reduced, then in that case hydrophobic interactions will also be reduced. Right. So hydrophobic interactions are responsible for the conformational changes of the receptor molecules once the drug binds with the receptor as well. Right. So these are short range attractive forces. So this is all about the type of interactions that can exist when a drug binds with a receptor. Right. So we can have uh, electrostatic interactions which can include charge charge interaction, charge dipole interaction and dipole dipole interactions. Right. We can also have the hydrogen bonding, we can have uh, the hydrophobic interactions, we can have adene adene interactions, we can have repulsive interactions as well. So it's important to note, it's important for you to remember that it's not compulsory that when drug binds with the receptor it will have only one specific type of interactions. 
right? Whenever drug binds with the receptor, since the receptor has a large surface area, it has large number of function groups present. So it is possible that a drug receptor interaction can have almost all type of interactions as well, right? So just by seeing structure of a drug, you can predict whether such type of interactions are available or not. So for example, if your drug has amino group or carboxylic acid group, you can know that these groups can be ionized under physiological pH, the type of interactions will be ionic interactions. Further, if you have polar groups present in the molecule, then you can have dipole-dipole and charge-dipole interactions. If you have long chain of hydrocarbons, then in that case you can have non-polar interactions or London dispersion forces. If you have a benzene ring, then you can have pi pi interactions between the drug and the receptor. So by just seeing the structure, you should be able to predict what type of receptor interactions this drug can have because of the presence of function group in that drug. So I suppose that if you understood this lecture well, thank you for your attention.